How did the Enigma machine work? How did Alan Turing break the Enigma using the Bombay machine? In this series of videos, we explore the Enigma machine and the Bombay machine, which we have built from scratch in a virtual environment so that we can actually see them working inside out and understand every aspect of these incredible machines. Welcome to Ingenious! In the last episode, we have seen how the Enigma machine can be cracked and the working principle of the Bombay machine. Now, we will take a look at the full-size Bombay machine that we have built and see it working in detail. In summary, cracking the Enigma with Bombay machine involves three steps. First, is to identify loops in the given crib. Second, is to connect the Bombay rotors as per the loops. Third step, is to apply voltage to one of the wires in the loop, and, run the rotors until an isolated wire is found. Step 1, is to find the loops in the crib. Here is the crib we have been looking at since the episode 1. Here is another way of representing the connections in the crib. Among these connections, we need to find and select the connections which form the loops. Here, one loop formed by letters E, I, and L is highlighted. Similarly, we can highlight all the rest of the loops. The connections highlighted in green are the ones which are of interest to us since they are ones forming the loops. Let us rearrange this circuit so that we can clearly identify the loops. Now, let us number the branches in each loop, as per their position relative to the initial rotor position. Notice that we have two occurrences of conversion from R to A. This actually gives us an additional loop. We have now identified all the loops and corresponding connections. This completes the step 1. Moving on to the step 2, connect the Bombay rotors as per the loops. In the last episode, we looked at Bombay rotors for a six-letter world and how they are formed using Enigma rotors. In this episode, we will take a look at full-size Bombay rotors and how they are connected in the Bombay machine. The structure of the Enigma rotors was such that the input and the output are taken out of the same 26 wires. Bombay rotors differ from Enigma rotors only in this aspect. The Bombay rotors have separate set of 26 wires for input and output, as shown here. This difference is made, because we need to connect these rotor sets in loops. Without this change, we cannot connect the rotors in loop. We need that distinction between inputs and outputs to form the loops as we will see in the later part of the video. This is what Bombay rotors look like. Let us take a look inside. This here is a rotor much similar to the one in Enigma machine, with 26 inputs and 26 outputs. The output to input mapping changes based on the rotor position. Let us take another rotor. This rotor is exactly same as the former one. And if we combine these two, we get one rotor of the Bombay machine. So, one Bombay rotor is formed by using two exactly same Enigma rotors. The two rotors are on the same shaft. They rotate together and have the same rotor position at any given time. Isn't this amazing? This is what lies behind a Bombay rotor. For simplicity, let us represent the 26 wires with a single cable. Bombay Rotor 1 was formed by using two Enigma Rotor 1s. Similar to that, we form Bombay Rotor 2 and Bombay Rotor 3, using the Enigma Rotor 2 and Rotor 3, respectively. And, we join them using the reflector wiring which is exactly same as the Enigma machine. This completes one set of Bombay Rotors. Bombay machine used to have as many as 12 of these rotor sets to form the loops. The rotor sets can be at different rotor positions relative to each other. 
This is demonstrated here. We have one rotor set at position X. The second rotor set, when rotated by one step, is at rotor position X plus one. Rotate by one more step, we reach X plus two. Rotate by one more step, we reach X plus three. Let us take three rotor sets at X, X plus one, and X plus two. If you recall from the last episode, this was the loop circuit we had used. This circuit can be formed by Bombay rotors, like this. So, now we know how Bombay rotors can be connected to form loops. Now, we are ready to run the full-size Bombay machine. Let us now head to the Bombay machine that we have built in a virtual environment. It has total 12 Bombay rotor sets. The first rotor set which has a distinct gold color outline is just for indicating the solution of rotor position. It does not connect electrically with any of the Bombay rotors. The little yellow triangle is used to read the current position of a rotor. Notice that, currently, all the rotors are at first position. Now we have to set the rotor positions for these rotor sets and connect them as per the loops we had found in the crib. In reality, this would be done by physically rotating the rotors and connecting cable bundles in the back of the Enigma machine. But in our virtual setting, we are going to type in these connections. Let us go open the rotor settings. Here, you can see the 12 rotor sets and their respective connections. Let us move the first rotor set by one position. As you can observe, the rotor sets rotate as per the setting entered. We can also monitor voltage on each of the 26 wires in the cable bundle for all letters. Currently this is showing 26 wires in the cable set for letter A. All are currently gray as we have not given voltage yet. Now let us enter the connections for the rotors using the loops we had found. E connects to T at X plus 2. E connects to L at 6. R connects to A at 7. Entering the rest of the connections. Done. All the rotors have rotated by the amount we have entered in the settings. Now we are ready to run the Bombay machine. We are going to begin from position 111. Bombay is running. Notice that the yellow rotor moves by one step every time red rotor completes one rotation, just like it did in the Enigma machine. The machine is scanning the rotor positions really fast. How nervous and excited the Bletchley Park mathematicians must have been when they ran this machine for the first time successfully. Let us take a look at the wires in the cable sets. For letter A, we can see that all the wires are carrying voltage. Same for E. Same for the rest of the letters. The Bombay is searching for a rotor position where it can find an isolated wire, that is, a single wire carrying the voltage. When that happens, the machine will stop running. Voila! Bombay has detected a solution. As you can see, the solution rotors are indicating C, E, and A, which indicates 3, 5, 1. If you recall from episode 2, this was the exact setting used in the Enigma machine. Let us take a look at the cables. This is the cable for the letter I. Only wire that has the voltage is the one for letter O. This indicates that I is connected to O on the plug board. In cable O, we can see that only I is carrying voltage, confirming the hypothesis that O is connected to I on the plug board. Similarly for cable A, we can see that only E is carrying voltage, indicating that A is connected to E on the plug board. 
In cable E, we can see that only A is carrying voltage, confirming the hypothesis that E is connected to A on the plugboard. For the cable T, only T is carrying voltage, indicating that T is not connected to any other letter on the plugboard. Similar hypothesis can be verified for other cables. So, we have deduced two plugboard settings. Letter A connects with E, and I connects with O. If you recall from episode 2, this was the exact setting used in the Enigma machine. We have cracked the Enigma. If you think you have got some value from this video, do hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss brand new content from Ingenious. See you in the next video.